This is a summary for a presentation by Patrick Schumacher about the evolution of the parametric style and its capabilities. In the first two videos of this playlist, we gave you a brief introduction to parametric design. Then we showed you how computational power is being used to morph the laws of nature into architectural forms and problem solving. In this one, Patrick argues that parametricism and its subsidiary style called tectonism can solve the urban design issue. It can create a sense of unity in our cities without the risk of making it look monolithic or utilitarian. Hit those like and subscribe buttons, and if you're interested, you can find the link for the full presentation in the description below. The Road to Tectonism Tectonism is a very rich and complex style, but before digging deeper into its impact on architecture, let us briefly discuss the history behind it. The work of Le Corbusier and others during the era of the Industrial Age laid out the path to modern architecture. It dominated the discipline for around 70 years, replaced the classical mentality, and underwent many transformations. Then came two important transitional styles that carried us from modernism into parametricism. These two styles are postmodernism and brutalism. Parametric design is the architect's use of computational and communication technologies. It is now almost 25 years old, and it too underwent some variations. Foldism. Foldism is the first subsidiary style with a simple idea and backed by a lot of science and engineering. It is about creating complexity without the use of multiple elements. The designers use the same surface to express the different architectural relations and features of their designs. This approach creates very fluid spaces that are adaptive to the context and to their internal requirements. Blobism and Swarmism These two are basically similar to the first iteration of parametric design. Blobism is the fusion of blobs into volumes. It delivers new level of complexity against the existing urban landscape. Swarmism applies more to urban design, where we can use a swarm of elements instead of one surface. The sheer quantity of elements should react as if they're one form following a continuous shape. Now let's talk about the current status of parametric design and what makes it special. Tectonism. From the first glance, we can notice that this substyle is different from its close relatives. It's not just a different morphology of forms. It also has grains of textures and colors. Parametric design is founded on form-finding methodologies and not on form creation. Tectonism heightens the structural and fabrication logics that are the core of these forms. It is the architect's stylistic expression to the engineering solutions, where the joints and material limitations of fabrication are considered as natural ornaments to the work of the architect. We can find early work of tectonism in the Sagrada Familia. Gaudi used physics to find the shape of the proper, most optimized shapes. The Armadillo Pavilion in Venice, a work by ZHA and Philip Bloch, is a representation of the capabilities of this style. The architects managed to create thin stone shell on top of a digitally generated structural solution. The textures discovered during the fabrication process of the stone was used as the ornament of the project. So fundamentally, tectonism is derived from the same laws of nature of the previous iterations. However, the artist stylizations of these laws can create a lot of varieties for the same solution. This by itself can help us create cities that are diverse in character while similar at their core. We also have to notice that the optimization process of this style makes it light and light-footed or environmentally friendly. Let us know in the comments section below if you find this video useful and if you are interested in specific topics that you would like us to cover. Hope you enjoyed this one as much as we did and thank you.